Hey, how you doing? Listen, Mike, I want you to turn to all your fans out there right now, and I want you to tell them how you feel, Mike. How do you feel about your sister Laurie Strode returning to Hattonfield? I mean, it's been quite some time since you guys have seen each other. Don't be shy, Mike. There's only like five people watching. Go ahead. Turn to them. Tell them how you feel, Mike. Because really, in the end, that's all that really fucking matters, isn't it? How do you feel? Come on. There you go. There you go. There you go. Go ahead. Tell them. He's a man of few words, and yet he says so, so much. Hey folks, how you doing? My name's Dave McRae. This is the AHG MMK, Michael Myers Mask. Uh, for those of you familiar with the Michael Myers Mask community online, um, you'll definitely know what I'm talking about when I say that this is an AHG MMK. This was also the Michael Myers Mask that I used in my most recent Halloween fan film, which was Halloween the Night He Came Back. If you haven't checked that out, you can check it out. It's on my channel right now. Yours truly also played the shape in that film, so this was the mask that I wore. And we also had the amazing opportunity of shooting some of that movie actually in Pasadena, California, at some of the original filming locations from John Carpenter's Halloween. So that was a dream come true. And of course, a check mark off the bucket list. I mean, come on. Um, so yeah, this is, I've owned a lot of Michael Myers masks over the years, and this undoubtedly is probably the best one I've ever owned. This, of course, just speaks to me. John Carpenter's 1978 classic. And depending on the angles you shoot it at, depending on the lighting you use, depending on um, how you how you set it up, can just knock your fucking socks off. I mean, this thing is just, is just totally awesome. This is, this is amazing. Uh, he usually sits right back there in that glass cabinet, uh, when I do my videos, but, uh, because of what we're talking about today, I thought I would bust him out, uh, and show you guys up close. But anyways, okay. He's going to sit off camera. Now that that's out of the way, how you doing? So, some big, big, big news drop today. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been waiting eagerly on my thoughts, on the big news that dropped. And what is that big news, ladies and gentlemen? Jamie Lee Curtis herself is returning to the Halloween franchise and uh, is going to be reprising her role as Laurie Strode in next year's Halloween movie that comes out uh, in October of 2018. Now, they're supposed to start principal photography next month in October of 2017. Whether they will or not, who knows? We haven't really heard much about when production's going to begin, but my fingers are crossed, so let's uh, let's keep some positive vibes there. Um, so yeah, so what are my thoughts on this? Well, I contemplated on whether or not I was actually going to do a video at all, because there's not really any information per se. I mean, there's a statement, but there's nothing, like there's no details, but there is a lot to speculate about. Now, about a week or so ago, I posted a video about my thoughts on the direction that I think this new Halloween film is going to go. I was basing that on my knowledge of the film industry. I work in the film industry. I was basing it on my knowledge, understanding cinematic language. I was basing it on my knowledge of, of being a huge Halloween fan. Um, and I came up with three different scenarios that basically led me to believe that based on the information we know thus far of sort of where they're going to go. Um, and hearing that Jamie Lee Curtis is coming back, sort of solidifies the fate for a particular scenario that I talked about in that video and gets rid of the other one. But it's interesting because they still could all kind of mesh together in some sort of way. It's fascinating. Like, it tells us so much that Jamie Lee Curtis is back, but yet it doesn't tell us anything at all, if you know what I mean. So it's fascinating. So let's break it down together. So let's start here. Earlier today, Jamie Lee Curtis released a uh, statement via her Instagram and Blumhouse released a statement via their Twitter and a couple of other websites related to Halloween picked it up as well um, with this promotional image, which I'm sure you've seen by now. Okay, so let me read what Jamie Lee Curtis said uh, via her Instagram and I quote, same porch, same clothes, same issues, 40 years later, headed back to Hattonfield one last time for Halloween. Okay, well, let's start with this promotional image, which you just saw. Ladies and gentlemen, this is nothing more than a promotional image for the purposes of getting you excited about the return of Laurie Strode to Halloween, about Jamie Lee Curtis reprising her role as Laurie Strode. That's what this image is for. 
okay? She's not going to be wearing these clothes in the Halloween movie, okay? So try, I, I see so many people online dissecting every little thing about this image like somehow there's some sort of inconspicuous subliminal messaging with this is, you know, within this image about the plot and about the narrative and about what's going to happen and all this. It's like, holy fuck. Like, just calm the fuck down. It's a promotional image that is for no other reason than just to say, hey, she's back. And they thought it would be really cute and fun to have her dress in her old clothes from 1978 and to have Michael Myers in the background on a porch that looks very similar to something we saw in Halloween. That's it. It's just a cute little way to say, hey, I'm back. Stop reading so much into it. It's just a fun image. Okay. Now let's dissect what she actually said. Same porch, same clothes, same issues. 40 years later, headed back to Hattonfield one last time for Halloween. So let's start here. Same porch. Okay, well, that means the movie's going to take place in Hattonfield, right? We know that. It's just cute. It's just cute for the shot. Same issues. Well, yeah, she's probably going to be dealing with Michael Myers, right? 40 years later. Yep, it's 40 years later. Headed back to Hattonfield one last time for Halloween. The most interesting thing in that entire statement from Jamie Lee Curtis via her Instagram is the state is the sentence headed back to Hattonfield one last time for Halloween. Now, you know, as well as I do. Okay. You know, at least you should. Okay. When somebody says, no, ma'am, this is it. Ah, this is, this is my last one. Oh, this is my last one. When you're talking about sports or you're talking about the motion picture industry or the entertainment industry, you know, as well as I do that when somebody really well known says one last time, you take that with a grain of salt. Money, 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 money. Gets a lot of people to come back, uh, even if they don't want to, but not all the time, not all the time. Um, let's look at Blumhouse's statement. Or I believe this is, this came from Blumhouse or Trankus. Anyway, here's the official statement. Jamie Lee Curtis returns to her iconic role as Laurie Strode, who comes to her final confrontation. Let me say that again. Who comes to her final confrontation with Michael Myers, the masked figure who has haunted her since she narrowly escaped his killing spree on Halloween night four decades ago. Well... This does give some insight potentially in that small paragraph into what we can expect from the story. This is going to be for all intents and purposes, according to this, now this could just be a flashy promotional statement, okay? Things can change, we know that. But according to this, this is going to be her final confrontation with Michael Myers. Famous last words in Hollywood, right? Um... Is she going to die? Is Laurie Strode going to die? Is Michael Myers going to die? Now, you know that I've, I have always believed and been, a, and been a proponent of Michael Myers being a mortal being. We will get into that again a bit later. Um, and I'll have some examples from John Carpenter. Um, but fascinating. Or is Laurie Strode going to die? Or are they both going to die? Or is Laurie Strode not going to die, but she's going to sort of, but she's going to sort of pass the torch to somebody else for some sort of reason. Fascinating, really interesting. Let me continue here because there's something that's said in the next part that makes me think that even though I do truly believe this is probably going to be a sequel to Halloween 2, this might be a sequel to Halloween 1. Now I know that David Gordon Green and Danny McBride and Blumhouse have in passing and in certain Interviews and articles have said, yeah, you know, we want to kind of make this a sequel to Halloween 2. We're going to ignore the events from 4, 5, 6, H2O and Resurrection. Thank God. Um, but like I said in my previous video, yeah, I mean, you know, the writing's on the wall with everything they've been saying that this is more than likely going to be a sequel to Halloween 2. But when you look at this part of the statement, which follows immediately after it, Master of Horror John Carpenter will executive produce and serve as creative consultant, which is what I pretty much thought, on this film. Joining forces with cinema's current leading producer of horror, Jason Blum, Get Out, Split, The Purge, Paranormal Activity. Inspired by Carpenter's classic, filmmakers David Gordon Green and Danny McBride crafted a story that carves a new path from the events in the landmark 1978 film with Green also directing. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Okay, so here are my thoughts. 
Jamie Lee Curtis is back and she's reprising her role as Laurie Strode. No doubt about it. So that, that leads me to think back to what I said in my previous video about the direction that I think they're going to go. And it makes me realize that yes, this is going to be a sequel and it's going to be a sequel in present day. Now, again, I do want to remind you that, you know, this could very well be a sequel to Halloween one, just based on these two statements. I think the probability is quite high that, that this could be a sequel to the original Halloween. And like I said in my last videos, I warned you guys of that because John Carpenter is attached and because of his relationship to the Halloween series and how he feels about Halloween 2 and how he feels about what Michael Myers was supposed to be and, you know, how the subsequent sequels got far away from that and all that kind of stuff. We're going to get into that a bit later again, but I just want you guys to be prepared that this could very well be a sequel to the original Halloween, which I would be okay with because it's not only my favorite film of the series. Um, but when you do away with the whole brother sister angle, you do go back to the roots of what Michael Myers was supposed to be. You see folks, something you also have to keep in mind as well, which has me leaning a little bit more over to a sequel to Halloween one than I was say a week ago when I posted my other video was that, you know, I mean, if you think about it, if it is a sequel to Halloween one, you don't have to explain away Michael Myers being shot in the face point blank in both his eyes and him being blind. You don't have to explain away, um, Michael Myers being blown up at the end of the movie and burning to death. You don't have to explain those things. So again, I, I still think this is going to be a sequel to Halloween two right now, but I think the meter is swaying a little more over to Halloween one than it ever has at any point in time. Um, so this is an interesting discussion, which I'm sure we'll continue to have as the weeks and months roll on, uh, until we have a definitive answer to, you know, where it is going to take place. So the real question is, is now that we know that Jamie Lee Curtis is back and she's going to be reprising her role as Laurie Strode, what's the story going to be? Do we know any more new information now than we did say 24 hours ago? that gives us some insight into what possibly they're going to do with this story. Well, like I said, the probability is very, very high that this is going to be a sequel to Halloween 2 set in present day. And this is going to be a 60 year old Laurie Strode. So I got to thinking, what are the different ways that they could go about this? And the real question is, what is Laurie Strode's role going to be in this new Halloween film? Is she going to be the star? Is she going to be making a cameo appearance? Is it going to be slightly more than a cameo, but not enough to be a supporting role or certainly not enough to be a star? Is she going to make an appearance three quarters of the way through the movie? Is she going to make an appearance maybe not until halfway through the film? So I started to think about sort of what is her relationship going to be in this new movie? Because, and we don't have any way of knowing that because we don't know what Danny McBride and David Gordon Green and John Carpenter are wanting to do with this new film. Now, remember, if you watch my other video, you know what John Carpenter's relationship is to the franchise. So you know that four, five, six, seven, and eight are going to be ignored. Okay. And you know, it's possible. It's possible that he could ignore, they could ignore Halloween two because of how Carpenter feels about Halloween two. But like I just said, because of that is so embedded into the pop culture consciousness, they probably won't, but it's possible. But this more than likely will be a sequel to Halloween two set in present day. But what is Laurie Strode's role? Okay. Well, I wrote some things down of some possible scenarios that you know, of what her role could be and the direction of where they might take it. Now, again, I don't know anybody attached to the project. I obviously am not attached to the project myself, so I don't have any inside knowledge to what that could be. This is the, these are just educated guesses of what might happen. Um, because we don't know. I mean, when you look at Halloween H2O, Laurie Strode's role was very significant in that film. I mean, yes, you know, they, they had her son and they had, you know, kids in the school, but for all intents and purposes, H2O was another Laurie Strode centric story. She was the focal point of the story. So, um, is that what we're going to get with this new Halloween? Is it going to act like a sequel, but a soft reboot? Is she going to pass the torch? Like what's going to happen here? Right? So here are some of my thoughts. I wrote them down. Number one, 
Jamie Lee Curtis takes on a Dr. Loomis type of role in this film to someone else's Laurie Strode type of role. Laurie maybe has become obsessed with Michael over the years and decided to go into sociology and psychology and now sort of help people like Dr. Loomis did. And maybe she has to return to Hattonfield for some reason because, you know, Michael's back and all shit is breaking loose and all that kind of stuff. Number two, Jamie Lee Curtis is the central character of the movie. So the narrative is told through her eyes, through her perspective. And maybe she, she's living somewhere else, but she has to move back to Hattonfield, Illinois for some reason, maybe to be closer to a daughter, to take care of a sick mother. Um, who knows? There's some reason why she has to move back to Hattonfield. Um, and, uh, yeah. And when she moves back, we go through the nostalgic Easter eggs of her walking along the streets or she goes into the old shop where she used to, you know, work or she visits the old high school, you know, and they set it up that way, you know, of her kind of, you know, reminiscing about the old times. Then she walks down Orange Grove and she sees the Doyle house and she remembers that night. They could totally play it that way. And the fanboy, nostalgic boy in me would eat it the fuck up. It'd be great. It'd be great. Um, but why she's there, we don't know. Maybe she's there. Maybe she just moves back there because that's where she grew up and she wanted to move back there. Maybe to help get the town back on their feet or something like that. Who knows? Because maybe the town is still run down and it's still sort of, um, you know, it's not where it used to be 40 years earlier. They still haven't really recovered from that massacre 40 years earlier. She moves back. She feels a sense of responsibility and she wants to help get the town back on their feet. Or maybe she comes back because, you know, what... Whatever the case is. Number three, maybe the film isn't told from Laurie Strode's perspective, but it's told from, say, another girl's perspective, a young teenage girl who was starting to go through similar things that Laurie Strode did. And she and her friends have to seek out Laurie Strode because she was the only one that survived the Halloween massacre 40 years earlier. So they have to seek her out, bring her back to Hattonfield. She's reluctant to go, but she hadn't, you know, she knows she has to go because it's her brother or what the fuck? I thought he was dead. He was burned in the fire. What the hell's going on? I got to go back. I got to figure this all out. I got to help these kids before things, you know, get way out of hand and before it's too late but it's told through the eyes um, of these other kids. They're the central characters and Laurie Strode maybe, you know, first enters the film like halfway through or something like that. That's a possibility. And, and, and maybe even Tommy and Lindsay are still living in the town. Wouldn't it be cool if they got the actual actors back? That would be awesome. That would be totally awesome. I don't think they're doing much, so come on. Brian Andrews, get the fuck on set. Anyway, um, that would be really cool. And maybe they're living in the town and, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, it's sort of like a, you know, a, a fucking Halloween reunion. Do you know what I'm saying? That, that would be kind of cool. Again, it all depends on how you write it. It all depends on how you construct it. It can get really lame, really cheesy, really fucking, we've seen this, done this before really fast. Um, but it can also work really well if you have new motivations for the characters and new things that are happening. And the reunion might be a really cool and awesome welcome to get everybody involved. Might be pretty cool. Number four, they take a page from John Carpenter's original idea for Halloween four, which was, it was 10 years later. Um, the town of Hattonfield is depressed, run down. They don't celebrate Halloween anymore. Halloween is banned in the town. You can't buy masks in the town. Um, and that repression from the locals actually bring Michael Myers back. They think they see him. They're not quite sure. Is he literally back? Is he not? Is he a manifestation? Really kind of cool. It's like a psychological horror and, and things like that. So maybe they're going to maybe take bits and pieces from Carpenter's original idea for Halloween four and sort of use them and mesh them into whatever ideas that David Gordon Green and Danny McBride had. That's a possibility as well. Who knows? Uh, number five, Laurie will meet her demise in this film, passing the torch on to someone else. Now, of course she could meet the demise in my other examples as well. And who knows? Maybe Lori will die regardless of, 
you know, of what direction they go in, maybe Laurie Strode will die at the end of the film, no matter what. And I mean, literally die. Like we know she's dead, not Halloween resurrection dead, where she falls and she falls through the trees and it's like, oh, but she could come back because we didn't see her land. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I mean, who knows? She did say I'm coming back to Hattonfield one last time. Now, who knows if that's just you know, I mean, that's just something people say. I'm coming back to Hattonfield one last time. I mean, if it's a huge success and if there's more to tell with her story and if she does become the new Dr. Loomis type of character, which would be kind of cool. I don't know if she has any interest in doing that. Who knows? Maybe you could bring her back and in subsequent sequels and, and, but, 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 but then the fan of me goes, yeah, we, we, we've done this already. We've done this already. Anyway. So those are my thoughts sort of on the possible direction that they could go with the story, um, that they may want to go with the story. I have no information that that's exactly what they're going to do, but knowing that Jamie Lee Curtis is back, I'm really curious now on what her role is going to be. Is it going to be the main role? Is the story going to center around her character coming back to Hattonfield, reminiscing, feeling it, feeling the pain, feeling the sorrow, the town is still sort of run down, you know? I mean, I like it, but is that what it's going to be? Or is it going to center around a group of other kids and she just sort of comes in towards the end to kind of help them out? Who knows? Now, some of you out there might be thinking, well, Dave, you, you've said in past videos that Michael is not immortal. And if they bring him back after Halloween too, how's that possible? He was shot in the eyes. He was blind. He was blown up at the end of the movie. How are they going to bring him back? Listen, I didn't, I never said that Michael Myers wasn't supernatural, didn't have supernatural elements to him. I said that he was a mortal being. All mortal means is that you can die. Okay, but that doesn't mean you're not difficult to kill or that doesn't mean you don't have some sort of weird supernatural element to you. I've always said that. Here's an exact quote from John Carpenter when asked about the Halloween sequels and Michael Myers. I didn't think there was any more story to tell. And he's talking about after the original Halloween and I didn't want to do it again. All of my ideas were for the first Halloween. There shouldn't have been any more. I'm flattered by the fact that people want to remake them, but they remake everything these days, so it doesn't make me that special. But Michael Myers was an absence of character, and yet all these sequels are trying to explain that. That silliness. It just misses the whole point of the first movie, to me. He's part person, part supernatural force. The sequel is rooted around in motivation. I thought that was a mistake. However, I couldn't stop them from making the sequels. So there you go right there. And even I, in my past videos have said, he's mortal with supernatural elements. Here's a clip from John Carpenter talking about the first Halloween in an interview in 1999. Listen to this. I needed a job. I wanted to be a director. So I added, uh, the slight supernatural edge to this guy. You know, sure, he's a person who escapes from a mental institution. And he comes back to revisit his small town, but he can't be killed. And there's a certain feeling of, you know, maybe he is, a, is not quite a human being. Here's that quote again. I added this slight supernatural edge to this guy. Sure, he's a person who escapes from a mental institution and he comes back to revisit a small town, but he can't be killed. And there's a certain feeling of maybe he's not quite a human being. Now, folks, those of you who are huge proponents of the immortal side will focus in on this one thing that he said there, which was, but he can't be killed. John Carpenter is talking about the first Halloween in and of itself. He's compart... Remember, this is an interview in 1999 about the first Halloween. He never wanted to do a Halloween 2. He's not talking about Michael Myers as a whole over the course of the series. He's talking about what Michael Myers was supposed to be in this movie. You weren't supposed to know. He can't be killed. He's stabbed. He's stabbed in the eye. He's shot six times and then he's gone. I don't know. It's kind of, it's so weird. He is a person, but it's it's weird. He has this slight supernatural edge to him, which is what John Carpenter said. And for years I've been saying he's mortal with supernatural elements, basically saying the same fucking thing. So, um, now there's a line in Halloween two that a lot of people tend to point to as well. When Jamie Lee Curtis says, why won't he die? 
Remember that? Right when, um, after Dr. Loomis shoots him in the hospital and the marshal is sort of leaning over him and Dr. Loomis and Jamie Lee Curtis, Jamie Lee Curtis, Dr. Loomis and Laurie Strode are sort of looking at him and Laurie Strode says, why won't he die? Dr. Loomis doesn't answer that question. He doesn't answer it because that wasn't a question for him. It was a question for you as the audience member. Why won't he die? What's wrong with him? Why is he like this? Michael Myers is a symbol, like Batman, okay? Batman is a symbol. That's why, for all intents and purposes, a lot of different actors can play Batman. Now, I'm not suggesting that many people don the mask and become Michael Myers, but Michael Myers was a symbol. He was a person, for all intents and purposes. Yes, he was mortal. Evil is immortal. Michael was mortal. Okay. He was this, he was like half human, half, what the hell is this? But that's why Carpenter killed them at the end of Halloween too, because he didn't want it to go on and on and on and become what it eventually became. He wanted to solidify the fate. He never wanted to make two in the first place because he lifted up the curtain and said, yep, see, he can bleed. He gets shot in the eyes and he's blind. You know what I'm saying? He is a person because remember, we never saw any blood from Michael Myers until Halloween two. It was Halloween two when Carpenter began to lift the veil up through his writing, began to lift the veil up and show, oh, okay, he can bleed. He, when he gets shot in the eyes, he's blind. He's burning. He's lying on the ground. He's burning. Oh, okay. He started to lift the veil and say, yeah, there's these supernatural elements to, to him, right? Or slight supernatural edge, slight supernatural edge. He's not coming out and saying, oh yeah, he's fucking, he's a demon. He's a fucking demon. Conjuring? Ha, <laughs> fuck conjuring. Michael Myers. No, he's saying he's got this slight supernatural edge to him. But Carpenter knew if I'm going to write Halloween too, I'm going to kill him because I don't want this to go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. But of course it eventually did. So anyways, so how does that relate to what I was just talking about? Well, I'm really curious on how they're going to bring him back, which makes me think they might take the angle of what Carpenter had with Halloween 4. It was the repression. It was the banning um, Halloween in Hattonfield, banning all the masks for years and years and years. This negative energy, this negative energy that somehow ironically brings Michael Myers back, but is he literally brought back or is there some sort of entity that's brought back that takes the form of Michael Myers or something? Fascinating. I'm really curious to see how they're going to play this angle. Fascinating. I wonder how they're going to do it. So anyways, folks, my name's Dave McRae. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Are you excited about Jamie Lee Curtis coming back to the Halloween franchise? Do you think that she's going to take on a central role in this new Halloween film? Do you think she'll play a Dr. Loomis type of character? Do you think she should play a Dr. Loomis type of character? Do you want to see Laurie Strode take on sort of the Dr. Loomis type of character from here on in. Do you think that Laurie Strode should die in this movie in sort of like a passing of the torch, kind of like Han Solo in The Force Awakens? Comment below and let me know your thoughts. I want to hear all of it. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but uh, yeah, comment below and let me know what you think. Oh, my, my cat has just entered. How you doing, Veda? Come on up. Come here. Come here. Let's show everybody. This is my cat, folks. This is Veda. She's a girl, so I couldn't name her Vader. So I named her Veda. Say hi to the world out there, Veda. What do you think? Are you happy that Laurie Strode's back? Are you happy she's back? She's unimpressed. I'll be with you in just a sec. Okay, yeah, so comment below and let me know your thoughts, folks. I'm excited about it, but I'm just, as a filmmaker and as a film fan and as a Halloween fan, now I'm just really curious about how, what kind of role she's going to have in this new film and how big or how small is it going to be? Comment below and let me know your thoughts. My name's Dave McRae and I will talk to you soon. I got some great ideas for some future videos coming up. Uh, if you have an idea for a video that you want me to do, if you want to know my opinions on something, let me know as well. I've contemplated and thought maybe I might do a YouTube live video, sort of an AMA, ask me anything. I don't know. Comment below and let me know. I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.